So let's get started. Um, I've got a piece right here. A, uh, it's a piece of black walnut, um, kind of like a really popular tree in Appalachia. And uh, I've broken it down. This is a really dry piece right here. Um, and I've broken it down to this little, you know, sort of like five, in five inch length piece here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a spoon. Uh, this is going to be a pretty small spoon, so it's going to be something like a salt spoon, or you know, we you can you can scoop whatever you want with it. I normally just call them salt spoons when they're this small, just something to dip into you know your your vat of salt in your kitchen. Um, but we're going to do a little twist with it. We're going to make it look like a morel. I've been on a morel kick um, this spring just because, well, really everyone has. They're out, they're picking morels. They're uh, um, a morel mushroom, if you aren't familiar with, uh, with what a morel is. It's a type of mushroom. And actually, I've carved a few of these already. So here, let me show you. It's going to be shaped sort of like this. So this is like the general idea of what a morel looks like. Now this one is like a pendant, so it's hanging on this uh, little bit of leather right here. But uh, it's got like the little notches in the top area. And it's got like a little stem down there in the bottom. Uh, these are highly sought after mushrooms all through, uh, well, Appalachia and really I think around the United States. I think, I think they even grow like in Europe as well. Um, and people love them. They really love them for cooking. Uh, you can just saute them in butter. A lot of people like them with uh, uh, steak as well. It's a, it's a pretty delicious, almost like a hearty flavor. Um, and uh, they really only pop up in spring right now. Um, this is really the tail end of their season, actually. And, uh, you know, I figure why not make little uh, morel pendants for luck. Uh, but today we're actually going to make a spoon, like I said. Ugh. So I've got a couple tools here. Maybe I'll show you the tools first. We've got, of course, a, um, a sloyd knife. It's just a um, carving knife, like a straight blade right here. A fixed blade. I mean, fixed blade means you can't fold it. Uh, this one's made by Beavercraft Tools. They kind of have like nice, uh, cheap entry level knives. Um, so this is a sharp uh, Sloyd knife, and uh, it's I'm going to use it to remove mo mo uh, most of the material off of uh, this piece of wood here. And uh, I also have a hook knife as well. And this piece might be kind of small for it, but the hook knife is going to be used to as you can see, it's got a curved blade. It's going to be used to carve right down into the wood to carve out the bowl of the spoon. You know, that's kind of like the one main purpose for this kind of knife. Uh, if you're going to do spoon carving, you're likely going to only need a couple of tools to start out, and it'll be a hook knife and it'll be a Sloyd knife. Those two right there. So, um, and if it proves to be too narrow, this piece of wood here, um, we'll move to sort of a more advanced tool. This isn't one that you would start out buying like just from the very beginning. You would, you would, <laughs> you would use this for very specific applications. I personally bought this uh, curved gouge um, for smaller spoons. I primarily carve a lot of spoons. That's mostly the main thing that I make. And so I got this tool right here specifically for pieces like this, where the spoon is going to be uh, too, or the wood's going to be too narrow for a hook knife to work on. So uh, we'll see. We might need this later. But the very first thing we're going to do is remove material with the Sloyd knife. I'm just going to use a thumb press. Let's see if things are lined up. Yeah, okay, and stuff's in focus as well. Very cool. So yeah, I'm just taking material off right here. With the thumb press, I'm actually gonna, there we are. Now I've already decided, um, you can tell 
from the shape of this wood. We have the grain going around in this direction. Oh yeah, you can see the rings. You can see the partial rings on this piece. Um, the bowl is gonna go down like this, right there. And the morel, the mushroom itself, is gonna be this top part. And so I'm gonna leave uh, more wood up there so that we can you know, do some fun stuff with the shape of that uh, for the morel. This bottom part right here is gonna be the uh, actual spoon itself. So that's why I'm taking this away first. Okay, we don't want to go too low because we don't want to lose uh, a lot of the spoon. Then we won't even have something like, you know, it won't even be a teaspoon size. Although this one may turn out to be just a teaspoon. Yeah, you can see how dry this wood is. It's kind of old and weathered on the sides, but as you take it away, it's starting to look pretty nice in there. So I'm going to take some of this, just some of these sharp edges really off the wood since it is sort of like a splintery piece. Don't want to grab onto it and like get a splinter. Okay, there we go. It would kind of be like at this point that we would uh, draw a circle right here on the end of the wood where we would want to have um, you know, the bowl of the spoon. I might just wing it with this one. Shape doesn't have to be perfect with it, especially since we're doing like a mushroom, which is kind of like just a natural looking thing. Uh, natural things are pretty forgiving when it comes to uh, their shape. There we go. Oh yeah, we don't want to go much deeper than that. That'll be good right there. And we have this end right here, this real harsh like kind of flat end. I'm going to start bringing that up just to give myself an idea of what the bowl is going to look like. Yeah, this is a pretty nice piece of black walnut. It, uh, it's the heartwood, so it's the dark part, uh, the inside. Um, a lot of people think like that this is the only color that black walnut is, but you've got to, um, they, they may not understand that there's the live edge when it comes to wood, and there's the heartwood. And so like cherry, people will think cherry is uh, like this red color. And it is in the heartwood, but the live edge is uh, a much lighter color. And it's the same for black walnut as well. This is the black part of it because it's so much darker. This is in the center. But the outside edge, I mean, that's actually uh, kind of like a, like a blonde color, really. It can be pretty light. One thing I'm curious about in general with uh, testing out this uh, spoon carving stream, so I'm working, so the main camera is my uh, kind of a nicer DSLR camera, but I don't know if I'm out of focus as I'm bringing it closer. So we're sort of in focus right there. Yeah, that looks okay. And maybe we bring it, that's a little too close. All right, we'll have to play around with that, where to hold it for carving. But so far, it seems like everything's kind of working out. The audio is my main question. I was testing it earlier, and it's, it's like decent. It's not great.
Okay. We sort of brought the bowl of the spoon up a bit. We'll be able to go pretty deep with that spoon as well. You can see how far down. So I think that'll work out. Maybe we'll start bringing this in kind of tight. Not have such a smooth transition from here to here, because really this is gonna be the stem of the mushroom. It's gonna contain the bowl and we're gonna really wanna cut in kind of hard because that's just kind of how the mushroom looks. All right, let's start taking a lot of material off of here. You can see, you see these two spots right here? We have a couple of knots in this piece. They might give me trouble later, I'm not really sure. We'll just have to feel it out. That's part of the fun of uh, carving, is uh, working through the, the problems or the imperfections in the wood. You can see the nice color of, uh, of the walnut. That's going to be really pretty when we oil it. Hopefully I can pull this one off. If I can get a nice shape out of this uh, mushroom up top, this will be a pretty neat little spoon. Just taking the sharp edges out of this. I'm giving it a bit of a curve too. I'm gonna bring it out this direction, you can see. I don't want it to be perfectly like up and down. I wanna give it a little bit of character. All right, so we wanna start bringing this into a point at the top up here. So I'm gonna start taking more material off near the top. All right, we're starting to get some shape to it. And we'll bring this to a point right here. Yeah, it's not quite looking like a mushroom yet, is it? Well, we'll get there. All right, you can see it has like this boxy shape all around the bottom here. We need to smooth that out. We don't want any indication that this was uh, a piece of wood, other than the fact that it's made of wood. Well, you know what I mean. We don't want any indication of the original shape of this. We'll put it that way. Sort of like a curved finger right now, isn't it? Okay, bring some of this front off. 
I kind of like how it's still sort of like fat right here, but we might take a little more off though. And we're gonna give it more of this unusual shape where we take a bunch out of this side here. Want it to kind of like lean, you know, you could see it's almost there. I wanna take that much? Yes, I do. With carving, you can always remove, but you can never put it back. <laughs> it's something you have to remind yourself as you're going. It's starting to move too quickly. It's like, well, you're gonna have to work around that. We can't put any back on. All right. Now, just to make this look a little bit closer to what I'm thinking of, I'm going to bring this stem part in so we can really start to see the shape of this thing. I'm going to bring that in all the way around. There we go. Yep. Yeah, I think I'm going to be doing carving on Sundays and uh, playing games, talking with people, hanging out uh, Tuesday and Thursday. That's the tentative schedule so far. Nothing's official yet, because we're still kind of planning things out and testing how things feel, but at least all the setup works for this. Yep, so you can see we've brought a lot down right here, and now the fun part, we get to go back over to it and start removing. When you start working in pretty close to your fingers, of course you need to watch out. This is a pretty sharp knife, so it makes things much easier. A dull knife is a dangerous knife. Any of you have uh, carved with your grandfathers <laughs> or grandmothers, Probably know that saying. Dull knife is a dangerous knife. There we go. Just sort of bring this stem in. Yeah, usually one of the first things you do when you're carving a spoon is that you'll carve the bowl out first. But it's not law. Sometimes it makes things easier. But today I just wanted to see the shape of the thing first before we decided uh, what to do with the bowl. It's almost like a wizard's hat right now. Sometimes it flips out of your fingers too. <laughs> That's why you carve away from yourself. So that even if you lose control, you don't cut yourself. All right, we're going to bring this stem down a little more. Okay. And we still have this shape right here that I really don't like, so we're going to start fixing that. I'm going to bring this point a little tighter on top up here too. It looks a little bit too fat on top. 
Yeah, this is better. Can even give it some sort of like notches. Just to give it that unusual shape. If something's too smooth, it just, especially with these, it just doesn't quite look right. There we go. Bring that in. All right, we're starting to get some interesting shape here. You can carve without a board over your lap, but it is much safer to carve with a board on you. And it kind of gives you something to like press the piece down against if you need to get that extra pressure on the wood. We're starting to get the shape of something here. Definitely going to fix up this part. This bottom is still uh, pretty square. Mm, we really don't want that. Needs to come in kind of tighter here too as well. So we're going to fix that. Let me get these off of here. Yeah, I'm going to bring it in a little tighter down there. Kind of liking how the shape is up top. Maybe I'll take a little bit more out of the very top, kind of give it a point. Now, uh, they wouldn't normally have like a sharp point at the top like this, but that's kind of where uh, you can differ, a little bit of artist discretion when it comes to making one, because you can accentuate the like features of it to kind of give it a little more character. There we go. All right, let's fix up these square, these uh, little corners down here. Uh, profile. Oh no, that's behind. Yeah. I think it still needs a little bit more shape. It's a little bit too straight right here. So let's kind of work on that. 
All right, and then we'll bring it in tighter this way. Just take out certain notches here and there. Need to start remembering though that can't put any back on, so don't want to go too crazy with taking bits off. There we go. Okay. Starting to come together. Yeah, rounding that bottom. Okay, that's kind of a sharp edge right there. I'm gonna take that off. Let's start looking at the bowl of this. So I'm just gonna take the hook knife. I'm gonna go from the top. Yep, we're pretty good and flat. Take this. And we're just gonna do a real light carve over the top here just to just to start the bowl of it Okay. It's kind of a rocking motion when you're using a spoon knife. And since it has a tendency to, you know, when you're pulling, when you're dragging against it, to jump off the edge of the spoon, you want to keep your thumb down below, not above the edge of the spoon, because it'll send it right into your thumb. Now, if you have nice strong calluses on your thumb, then you can just stop the blade. But I don't have those. There we go. Now we're starting to get in there. Getting a natural, nice natural curve to it as well, just from the, just the shape of the blade itself. Maybe we can bring just a little more toward my side. Yep. It's looking pretty good. Now there are a few ways to use a hook knife. Um, but I've, and I've, I've gone through a couple different ways as I've been learning how to use it over the years. And this is, this is the way I've definitely settled on is just sort of keeping it in my hand right here like this blade facing me and, uh, just dragging it back toward me. Seems to be the easiest way, honestly. And since the grain of the wood is going this way, well, you would never want a spoon with grain going this way because it would just snap off. Uh, but since the grain is going this way, uh, you have to remember when you're carving with the hook knife, especially the bowl, that there's actually gonna be like four directions. So you can start out, um, you know, just going from one direction to the other uh, across the grain, like, um, I guess that would be perpendicular to the grain. But as you get down in there, uh, you'll be going and you'll be thinking of carving in four directions. And let me point those out. Uh, 
you carve from here down to here, from here up to here, from here down to here, and from here up to here. Because if you go against those, it'll actually just split the wood. It'll start snapping it. So if you like started with the blade facing this way and carved like this, you know, in this motion, you actually just be breaking this up as you go. So you have to bring it back this way. It's kind of a, um, I mean, it like makes sense, but it's kind of a strange concept to uh, wrap your head around, especially like if you are just starting out carving. Now the counter to that is that if you have a blade that's sharp enough, like unbelievably sharp, then you really don't have to worry about it. But it has to be crazy sharp. We're starting to get some depth to the bowl here. And soon we might have to move on to the uh, gouge. Let's see. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, just going to take the gouge. And um, this one's a little bit, like, long for the work that I'm doing. It should actually, like, the one I should be using should be, uh, like, a handle, like, up to here. But I make this work. So I have my thumb almost all the way against where it starts to curve. And then in the little uh, divot in the bowl that I've already started with the hook knife, I'm just sort of bringing in this. I'm really using this because it's going to be able to go deeper than the uh, hook knife. Now I wonder, you might be able to get a hook knife that looks or that is um, smaller than this one. Like, it might have a tighter curve than this. I never really looked it up. Yeah, we'll be lucky if we get a, a teaspoon out of this, which is okay. That's why I'm not really going for a measurement with these. You can, um, and I have before, but not with this one. So we've got, you can feel the difference. There's not really any way to explain other than um, telling you that I know that it feels different, but you can feel the difference right here. It's a, uh, it's a lot harder on this edge right here. I have a little cat visitor. What's up, buddy? What's up, boogie? What's up? <laughs> You're gonna get shavings on you. You're gonna get shavings fall down on you. Oh well.
Just don't eat them. Yeah, her shape isn't quite perfect with the bowl. That's going to happen if you don't draw one out first. But you can always kind of, uh, you know, make some adjustments. You can make adjustments until you can't. <laughs> that's, that's the name of the game. You can make adjustments until you can't. Now, there's no rule that says you have to finish the part that you're working on. So I'm going to take a break on the bowl. We're going to move back to the shape itself. Up top. And I'm just going to remove some more material here. We're not going to go crazy with it because I don't have a whole lot left for the shape that I want. But still removing some of these uh, like harsh edges. A little bit of weathered wood right there. Let's go around the edge of the bowl. Trying to fix some things. Do I feel something right there? Sometimes you find a split or a crack as you're going, and uh, that's kind of unfortunate, but I think we're okay right here. see the tail of a visitor walking around. He just has to know what's going on. Has to be in everyone's business, my huh, Bubby. <laughs> you gotta be the star of the show. All right. Bringing this stem in a bit. Bring a little shape to the silhouette of the thing. I think soon I'll be able to move on over to the um, little negative, the empty spaces all throughout as well. Kind of like the one that I have finished here. Let me show that again. So you can see all the uh, empty spaces. We're going to be using the same gouge to do that. And actually because the mushroom is going to be larger, um, it's going to have a better effect just because of the size of the gouge. Um, for something like this, you'd probably even want 
like a smaller gouge, you know, for one of these, but we're kind of doing something that's um, stylized, like I said before, but it's gonna fit better um, with this uh, mushroom spoon up here, little salt spoon. I still want to get, I just want to get this uh, stem cleaned up a bit and looking better. And that'll kind of give me a better idea on how to work on the bowl itself. Like I said, we were uh, kind of winging the shape of the bowl based on what the uh, hook knife did as I was going around, so. With the stem cleaned up, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna give me a little more of a guide when digging out the bowl itself. There we go. Kind of making this like turning, curving motion with the blade. Um, I mean, you could do that. It's, uh, it's, you know, people say it might like dull your blade more quickly. You're, you know, you're not like actually cutting, you're like bending. But if you have, if you do it like up toward the tip of the blade there, um, you're gonna get better results just because like it's, uh, it's smaller and it has more room to move. So you can really get away with it up there. And that's kind of where I, Primarily whenever I am doing this like turning curving motion like with my wrist here It's normally using the uh, tip of the blade up there Just bringing things in a little tighter Toward the stem there we go now we're starting to really get some shape and I'm gonna just remove that material. Yeah, that's looking better. There we go. Okay, you might wanna flatten that out. Not quite sure yet. What I am gonna do, let's do a little bit of this and then I wanna get back um, to figuring out the bowl of the spoon, of the little salt spoon, the morel mushroom salt spoon. Now you could get away with only using the um, fixed blade carving knife and a uh, hook knife when it comes to making a spoon, for sure. Um, it's just that when uh, you're working on something like this small, which is kind of an unusual spoon to work on anyway, but it's just the size of the uh, pieces of walnut that I had. Um, when you're working on something this small, bless you, kitty. Uh, Oh, you're sneezing. Watch out for the wood chips. Um, you have to use something that can make a little bit of a tighter shape, and that's going to be one of these gouges here. And take that sharp point off. We don't want anyone stabbing anybody with the spoon. All right, let's get some shape around the bowl here.
Oh, yeah. Sometimes a certain cut just kind of feels right. Not right there. It's just taking away the right little spot of material. Okay. Back to the gouge. I think when you're usually when you're using a gouge like this, um, the thing that you're working on is supposed to be uh, pressed into like a vise, and so it's like totally still, and you can like you know walk around it and work on it, but. Not all the time. If you're using it safely, then you can use it however you want. Taking little bits and pieces out of the bowl here to make it deeper. It's not going to be a perfect shape. But that's okay. It may actually complement the uh, offset shape of the handle. I'm working pretty close with my hand in here, but kind of still just making sure everything is like secure. Yeah, there we go. Let me bring it around the bowl in here. Walnut does smell really good. <laughs> it's such a fragrant wood. You start working with it and taking bits of it away and it just really smells good. All right, let me just see. Maybe we can do this bit with the hook knife. Yeah, we can do some. Okay. We can get a close-up view as well. Let me fix the focus on there. Look at that. Still looking pretty rudimentary. But it's getting there. It's getting some shape. All right. Back to the gouge. I'm gonna get this bowl kind of uh, looking good here. There we are. Just kind of walking it around. Sometimes you get this neat effect whenever you use this small gouge. 
kind of like a sun or like a sunflower effect. Just the ridges of the blade kind of going down into the bowl all the way around. I feel like some people would take that out with sandpaper at the end, but I usually like to leave that kind of thing in. When I was first carving, I did a lot of sandpaper. Sanded away a lot of stuff. And sand, sandpaper can be like a crutch. I know there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of artists or a lot of uh, carvers who kind of like poo-poo the idea of using sandpaper. Um, I don't have anything against it. But I think that it can, you know, it can be used to fix a lot of mistakes. But also it uh, kind of removes the artist a little bit from the work too. If you don't see like all the knife marks and gouges and gouge marks and stuff. And it starts to look maybe even like machined and it's kind of the opposite of what we're going for here. We don't really need our work to look uh, machined. There's enough of that out there. Carving in toward myself, but because it's a uh, hooked or a curved gouge, it's not really a concern. There, now we're starting to get some depth to this bowl. Oh yeah, that's good. If I had to guess, I'd say we're around half a teaspoon. Anywhere from a quarter to half a teaspoon size right here. Which I say is almost perfect. You call it a pinch spoon for a pinch of salt or a pinch of sugar. Okay, how's that look? Yeah, not bad. So we need to fix up the shape of the bowl around, like these edges and you know this kind of thing right here. We want to have the whole thing rounded uh, beneath it. But as far as this goes on the inside, we do a little cleaning up, but I'm liking the shape of it. can feel all those ridges in there. All right, let's clean up the edges of the bowl. Now this is where you have to actually watch out because it could be one of the most fatal mistakes that you make <laughs> in spoon carving. <laughs> if you remove too far up into the bowl, then you just have a hoop, a circle, kind of like a donut thing. And after all these years, I still haven't figured out what to do with that shape. So kind of a useless thing when you get to that point. So you want to watch out when you're carving this bit right here that you don't go all the way through to your bowl. You keep pinching with your fingers to feel where the knife is. How thin are we getting? Now we're actually pretty thin on this side here and on this side, so we need to watch out when we're carving those bits.
lots of thumb press. There's many different carving techniques. You can pull towards yourself. Um, you can do the butterfly right here, like this. But I default to the thumb press. I feel like I get the most uh, control with the thumb press. One of the downsides is that you may bruise your thumb. There are um, little leather covers you can buy to put over your thumb for using the thumb press. I don't have one. Maybe I'll pick one up at some point. Probably should. Starting to get a good curve to it. Maybe we'll bring a little more in over here. Again, pinching and feeling the inside of the bowl to make sure we don't cut right on through. cleaning up this underside here. Still want to bring it in kind of tighter, if you know what I mean. We don't want it to be rounded at the bottom. Okay. All right, got some little bits here we can work on. And we're almost done with this top shape. And we can add the little details all the way around with the gouge. But we're starting to get something nice here. Let me bring a little bit away. I don't like the uh, thickness of the top. There we go. Yeah, that's looking better. Yeah, seems good. Let's have some fun with the shape. And we don't have to get too precious with it, fiddling around here and there. Just do a couple more little cuts and then we'll get to the gouge where we remove a lot of the or remove all the little uh, little holes, little inserts, little negative spaces all the way around. Kind of a thick edge on the bowl there. Let's take that off. Okay, and a little more right there. Okay. And just a bit there.
kind of a lot of freedom when it comes to uh, carving in general. You don't have, I mean, we have a specific shape in mind, but it's not too specific. So you can just kind of have fun with it. And... One of the downsides, though, is that you could spend forever on it if you wanted to. You got to know when to say, all right, that's good. Next part. Which I think is right about now. We'll clean up the bowl later, but let's get to little negative spots all the way around. And for that, we go back to the gouge. And we just dig right in. Maybe we'll bring this a little closer. Just to see what we have going on. There we go. I'm just making little divots, really, all the way around. I'm kind of walking the uh, blade around and making little empty spaces like that. And we're gonna walk. We're gonna go all the way around the whole thing like that. And we don't want them like in concentric circles because that won't really look right. So we'll have them offset. Let's bring that back down. There we go. Try to get the focus on there, correct? I've made a lot of these so far, and I'm always kind of surprised. Maybe I need to knock on wood, but I haven't this. The, the, it must be the shape of the gouge, but it doesn't really jump. It doesn't jump out of the wood when I'm doing this part. And this part seems like some, you know, really some of the least safe, the least safe part of making one of these, right? It just kind of seems like it's always going to jump right out of uh, one of these uh, little divots, but just doesn't seem to happen. <laughs> kind of tempting fate right now, I know, but maybe it's uh, not as bad as I thought. One thing that's really interesting, and again, this is with walnut heartwood, is just how different it looks when it's oiled. These two are from the same tree. It's gonna be the same piece. And this one right here is going to be this color once it's oiled. It really is. It's kind of wild. Um, it's always surprising when that happens, but that's just one of the, another one of the beautiful things about uh, heartwoods in general, but walnut heartwood especially. I'm gonna walk this one up kind of far. There we go. We have to make them different shapes as we go because if they were all like the same size, um, 
and same same exact shape all the way around, it still doesn't look right. All right, starting to get a little something to it here. Next time we work, maybe on the next stream, we might zoom in a little further, or we may um, have brighter lighting. Not quite sure. We could turn this lighting down and have it shine directly on. Now that removes it from my face, but uh, that might be preferable right there. And then if we turn this out, There. Well, it kind of gives some contrast too. I like that look. Let's connect. Well, no, we won't connect any of these yet. Let's just get them all finished. Let's get them all in. And then we're going to connect uh, two or three of them. Go a little deeper on that one. Yeah, I'm starting to, you're starting to see it come together, right? I think it's looking much better. It's always at this point, you know, before it still looks pretty crude. Maybe like rudimentary or just not quite like, it doesn't quite come together in your mind. Until you get to this point when you're adding the little, uh, you know, the little notches into it. And then whenever you start to see a bunch of these in a row, it's like, oh yeah. If you already know like what kind of mushroom that is. And you're like, oh, yeah, it becomes clear. <laughs> there we go. Remove little bits off the top there. just to give it some shape, some edge. I like that. Yeah, these little uh, these little bits give it quite a quite a transformation, but the biggest transformation is definitely going to be at the end um, when we add the butcher's block oil to it. Just sort of like a mixture of linseed oil, uh, beeswax, maybe mineral oil as well. It's all like food safe. And uh, it literally is like, you know, conditioner for butcher's blocks. Yeah, there's where that little knot was. Okay. Got around that, okay. Yeah, you can even see like little patchy, like rough spots sort of where uh, the wood uh, tore instead of cut correctly. And um, you can go back at them. 
this way. I'm going to go back at him with the gouge here like this. Um, you could even leave them because as soon as you oil it, uh, it kind of like it kind of covers that stuff up. If they're blatant, you want to go back and fix them though. At least I do. There we go. There we go. Let's make a longer one here. There is something kind of calming to uh, carving. Sort of like a, definitely like a Bob Ross type feel. Especially on a nice lazy Sunday, right? Taking it easy before the week starts. It's all gonna be okay. piece out of there. What's it looking like on the camera there? Okay. Yeah, it's coming together. Yeah, that side light, it actually kind of highlights these little divots quite a bit, doesn't it? It's almost like a beehive type pattern. We don't really want something that perfect, so that's why we're going to connect a few of these when we're done removing them. Bees are too perfect in their shape. Yeah, these two are already connected. Let's do that. There we go. Okay. Well, we're on the last few of these now. We're actually almost done with the spoon itself. And no, we're not going to hit this one with sandpaper at the end. As soon as I'm done with all the cuts, that's it. Then we just hit it with the conditioner and it's good to go. Ready to be used on salt or sugar. Walk that one a little bit more. Create some variation in the shapes. Again, if they're all the same shape and size, something about the eye, it doesn't trick the eye enough into making it look like it's sort of real. So we need some variation in there. There we go. Bring it in a little tighter right here. 
Maybe sort of a deeper one, kind of walk it around a little more. There we are. And let's make this a longer one as well. We'll walk it up to the next one. Oh yeah, nice. Okay, just a couple more. And then we do a little bit of cleaning up. And that should be it for this. Yeah, it's coming along pretty good. corner a bit. Kind of remove that torn edge there. All right. Now we just have these little bottom ones on the rung, bottom rung here. I think I might have made enough of them um, like double in length. We'll take another look at it, but might not have to do any more of that which is good. Just sort of did it along the way. Yeah, we'll tighten up the bottom of the mushroom itself where it goes into the base. And we'll also fix up the uh, bowl. That'll be the last part of this and then we'll call it. little practice spoon carving stream. You know what, we could connect. Let's connect one more of these. And we're gonna connect these two right here. They're too far apart. And everything was looking a little bit too perfect. Too uniform. And we don't want it to look uniform. There we go. All right, let's bring this into a close-up shot to show you what we have going on. Right. The bowl still needs some work. Kind of got like some squared edges to it. And uh, the base of the mushroom needs to come in a little bit tighter to the uh, stem. I'm gonna do a little bit of extra cleaning up, but not too much. Let's clean up some of these jagged parts as well. Like I said though, I mean, you cover it in the uh, butcher's block cleaner, butcher's block uh, conditioner, and then sort of give it a good rub down. And uh, it, it's surprising how much it covers up. Yeah, that looks good. All right, we'll do a little bit in the bowl here. Just a little bit. We don't wanna, we don't wanna punch through, but we're just gonna do some cleaning. Yep, bring that over a little bit. It might have a bit of a boxy shape, but it's okay. We'll get rid of these edges though, right here. So let's go back to the Sloyd knife. And we'll take those corners away. There we go.
bring that stem in. When it comes to like, I really think any kind of art, um, even beyond carving, but if you think of like sharp contrast, um, I don't know, it kind of it kind of like gives everything a pop. And what I'm talking about here with sharp contrast is um, bringing the stem in as close as you can uh, without making it um, delicate, like without making it too delicate. And then that gives it a contrast between the thin and then popping back out to the actual shape of the mushroom on top. Let's see, let's see if I can put that into practice right here. But that contrast always kind of makes a piece stand out. Sometimes you, you know, one of the one of the best questions you can you can get a person to ask after you make something is how'd they do that? It's one of my favorite ones. If someone's asking how'd they do that, then you know you've done a really good job. Kind of a sharp corner there. We're going to fix that. And then we might give it another. Let's get. Let's give it a a notch as well, just right in here. Yep. Walk it around. Pop it out. Let's clean it. Okay. Do we need another? Looks like we could use another right here as well. Walk it around. Oh, okay. And you start to find some spots that there's too much space in between the notches right here. So we're going to make one of these a little bit bigger. We're going to walk it up to the next one. There we go. Exactly, just like that. If there's too much space between them. It doesn't look right. Looks like you missed a spot. And essentially, I did. So. All good now. So, like I said before, bringing that stem in nice and tight. Sort of a nice thinner stem is going to kind of give it some pop, some extra pop. And we have a lot showing in these two spots right here as it goes up. So I'm not quite sure. I'm a little bit torn whether or not to... Maybe we'll just take some away instead of actually making more little divots. Yeah, I think that's the move. Take it away. There we go. Yep, and that lets us dig right up in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it needed. Okay, and for this side of the bowl, take that corner off. Make it rounded. Try not to cut all the way through. That would be devastating. Yep, just give it that rounded look that all spoons should have. We're going to take I'm just going to take some of this off as well. It looks like it just doesn't look great. 
I think it's still, I think I left some of the uh, weathered edge of the wood on. So we need to take that off. There we go. There we go. Now we can take some of this around the edges there. Okay, that's much better. Give it kind of that tilted edge all the way around. Same over here. Still looking kind of square, so we're going to fix that. Same on this side. This is just cleanup work right here. Little detail work. Okay. Starting to get something here. We are almost there. We're almost home with it. Just removing a little more around the bowl, just to smooth it out and make it rounded. And then again on this side. We've got all these little facets all around here too, so we're gonna kind of clean them up. Just give them one more pass. Just looking at everything, look at the shape of it. Yep, we could clean this around here. And right here, up at the top of the bowl has like that kind of shiny ring around it. And we're gonna actually remove that, I don't like it. There we go. Now we can clean things up inside the bowl here if you want to spend a bunch more time on it. Um, I might want to call this one. Do a little more cleaning all the way around. I kind of like the look of it. It's got some rough edges. Sort of a rough shape. But something about it looks very like natural. Like it just got plucked out of the earth especially down here, this little weird bowl bulb thing going on. I think it's great. So we're just gonna clean up the edge of the stem here. Put our stamp on it and then oil it. And that'll be another spoon in the books. Just get these little hairy edges finished off at the base. Sometimes these will drive you crazy if you're carving. You just want to say, go one direction or the other. Come on. Nope. They all want to pop up either way. If you have a really sharp blade, this isn't so hard. 
but it does kind of get dull as you go along. There we go. Now that's starting to get cleaned up. I like that. All right, let's grab the oil. Oh. First, we got to do our stamp. How about we put it right at the base, right there? A Z. Boom. Looks great. Oh, so here's the butcher's block conditioner. Literally, it's just what it's called, Howard brand. I think you can buy this stuff at Lowe's. Um, you could probably find it all over. But we'll just do a little bit right here, kind of all over the spoon, and rub it down. All kinds of ASMR sounds in this video today, huh? Can't say I'm a fan of this one, though. You can see how dark it's getting, though. Really see how dark it's getting. I'm using my pinky to get into some of these facets. to make sure you pick the little cat hairs off too. If that happens to be one of the hazards of your workplace. I know it is in mine. All right. I'd say that looks pretty good. That is a fun little morel salt spoon. Now that'll dry and it won't be so shiny. Maybe in about an hour. That'll be all dried out and it'll look just like this one. And it'll be ready for use. Get one last look at it. Looks pretty good. So I'd say that was a uh, successful first stream. We're going to be doing more spoon carving streams um, or just carving in general streams, I think, every Sunday. And as usual, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to be in the same place but doing a different thing. I'm going to be gaming. Um, so join me for those as well. We have a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Peace.